Hello, I'm Cheryl Knott, the GIS Analyst for the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance at the University of Baltimore. This video is to go over the McEldry Park Data Viewer, an online mapping and data download portal created for the McEldry Park community to provide up-to-date data for residents, program partners, and other stakeholders as part of the Burn Criminal Justice Innovation Grant. Uh, this is the link to the McEldry Park Data Viewer. Um, it is also in the video description. Um, I recommend that the rest of this video be viewed uh, full screen so that you can see some of the things that I will be highlighting on the map. So on the landing page, we have data downloads. Uh, this is all the data that is presented on the web map. So those, these files are really great if you want to dig deeper and uh, see what's being displayed on the interactive map. So we have this link here, launch the McEldry Park Data Viewer. Um, you click on that to open up the web map. Um, sometimes it takes a few seconds to load, um, depending on your internet connection. So the first thing that is on view when you open up this interactive map is part one crime. Um, so on the left hand side of the map, there's a bunch of text, but it's really good information to check out before you start uh, playing around and clicking on the map itself. So uh, on the left hand side, this first paragraph kind of goes over what the data actually is. So what are part one crimes? Uh, where does the data come from? So if you scroll down on this left hand side, we have the map legend. So you can see that there are different dots for different types of crime incidents. Uh, we have homicides, shootings, aggravated assaults, common assaults, and so forth. So in addition to having the specific locations of these crime incidents, we also have density of incidents. So areas that have a very high density of crime incidents are going to be showing up on the map as yellow and areas that don't have quite as many incidents will be uh, like a, a, a blue shade. Um, for the purpose of the, uh, the Burn Criminal Justice Grant, uh, Binia identified some long-term crime hotspots, and these are going to be highlighted on the map in yellow. So these are areas that have had long-term significant issues with crime. So these areas are highlighted in these yellow outlines may not necessarily be where the crime is happening right now in the McEldry Park community. So by looking at this density of crime incidents, you can see if it lines up or not. So jumping over to the right hand side of the map, um, there's a few tools that I'd like to highlight. So we have this plus sign, this little icon that will zoom the map in. Um, if you click on that, it will just auto zoom. Um, if you want to zoom back out, there's this minus sign button that will zoom out. Um, if, for instance, you zoom in too far and you kind of lose track of where you are in the community, there's this home button. If you click on this, it will recenter the map for you. So you can drag the map around. You can zoom in or move the map around with your cursor. And you can see the locations of crimes that were reported to the police. And each one of these dots is clickable. So if you click on a dot, it will bring up a window that provides a little more information about the kind of crime that occurred at that location. So this one that I clicked on uh, has the date and the time, the type of crime at the very top, which is a larceny, the location of the crime as well. And so if you zoom in and out, this density display layer is kind of reactive. So it will redraw itself as you zoom in or zoom out. So one of the other features of this map is the search function. So you can search for specific addresses and the map will zoom into that location. So if you click on the uh, magnifying glass here, it will bring up a little window and you can type in an address. So I'm going to type in 611 North Monford Avenue. And here we have uh, the first result. Uh, this is the McEldry Park Community Association. So if you click on it, it will automatically zoom into that location on the map. 
so you can see what kinds of uh, crime incidents are uh, within close proximity of that address. So in addition to having the part one crime data, we also have on this map the 311 city stat calls for dirty streets and alleys. And so you can access that data by going to the top of the page and clicking on this 311 city stat calls tab. So again, we have some information on the left side of the screen that talks about what 311 calls are. Um, we also have uh, little did you know sections that talk about different opportunities for reducing crime. So in this case, uh, for the city stat calls, um, there have been uh, some academic studies that have shown that if you improve street lighting, you can have a reduction in crime. So on this map, the black dots are locations of calls for dirty streets and alleys, and these are clickable as well. So if you click on a dot, it will bring up more information about the type of call it was when it was placed and um, information about uh, what the city did to address the call. Uh, we have additional icons. Uh, these are little red lights. These are street lights that are out in the community that have been reported out in the community. So if you click on that again, it brings up the location um, and whatnot. There we go, lights out at 2400 McElderry Street. So again, we have the same types of tools. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can recenter the map, and you can search for addresses. And one of the neat things about this map is that you can toggle back and forth between the crime data if you, by clicking on the crime tab and the city stat calls, and it will maintain the same map view. So you don't have to rezoom or rezoom back out. So we also have vacant residences as the third tab. So if you click on that, it will bring up uh, these yellow orange dots. Uh, these are the locations of properties that have been identified as vacant and abandoned by the city of Baltimore. Again, you can click on these and it will bring up information um, and give you the, uh, the location of the vacant property as well as the owner's name and the owner's mailing address. One additional thing in this pop-up down here uh, under more information, there is a web link to the Maryland uh, SDAT listing for the property. So this is a hyperlink. If you click on it, it will open a new page and will bring you to uh, the Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxation uh, page for this property. So you can see uh, the owner name, the mailing address, and things like uh, assessments and uh, information about uh, property sales. So going back to the other tab, uh, there is also this fourth tab, community assets. So if you click on that, it will bring up community assets in McElderry Park. So assets are people, places, and programs that can serve everyone in a positive manner in the neighborhood. And so uh, if, again, on, if you go to the left-hand side and scroll down, there is a map legend. So you can see the icons that represent the City Watch cameras, places of worship, shopping and services, grocery and deli locations, community organizations and nonprofits, healthcare sites, education sites, community managed open spaces, uh, banks, and so forth. And again, all of these points are clickable. So if you zoom into the map and click on an icon, it will bring up a little box that will tell you what kind of point it is on the map. So this is a um, listed as a community organization and nonprofit. You can see the names, the Center for Graceful Living, located at 2424 McElderry Street. And we provide, when possible, uh, contact phone numbers and websites. So again, um, this more info, that is a hyperlink. So if you click it, it will open up into a new page. So lastly, um, in the upper right-hand corner, uh, there are options for sharing this map on Facebook, Twitter, and as direct links. So here's my contact information. Um, I can be reached by either phone or email. If you have any questions about the McElderry Park data, 
or the map itself or any other questions relating to the burn criminal justice grant, uh, please feel free to give me a call or send an email. Thanks for watching.